Hey, my name is Nick Valesky with the Utah State University Extension Integrated Pest Management Program, and we're here at the IPM Demonstration Farm. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, promotes the use of non-chemical options over pesticides. A high level of IPM implementation uses multiple non-chemical practices resulting in decreased plant losses, improved profits, and protection of human health and environment. Rapid development in Utah has resulted in an increased interest in small-scale urban farming and non-chemical pest management options. Although Utah has lost 16,792 acres of farmland between 2012 and 2017, the total farm operations has increased, where 34% of these farms are between 1 and 9 acres, and about 44% of these farmers have less than 5 years of experience. Our program put together this demonstration farm to meet the needs of the growers in Utah by kind of replicating what they might have at their own operations. So here we're demonstrating a variety of different IPM techniques that growers can implement on their own farm. Let's check some of them out. So one of the big problems on farms is obviously weed control. So a few um, organic options that we use is weed barriers. So here we're using straw mulch, plastic mulch, and then a uh, weed barrier fabric. So companion planting is the use of interplanting different crops together for some mutual benefit. It's a really common practice in small urban farms and home gardens. So in this trial, we're looking at the use of different herbs like basil, parsley, and chives interplanted amongst five different varieties of tomatoes. So we have our variable group right here and we're gonna compare that to our control plot where there's no companion planting. So we're gonna look at things like the amount of pests, the overall plant health, and then yield. Row covers are a really effective way to physically exclude different pests from accessing our crops. Brassicas are one of the most susceptible crops to different pests like cabbage aphids, cabbage loopers, cabbage whites, a lot of different pests. So in this trial, we're looking at using insect netting to exclude those types of pests from our Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. So we have half of our those covered and then half of them exposed. So we're gonna look at different pest counts and then just the overall quality and yield of our plants. Tomato spotted wilt virus is very problematic throughout Utah, especially in our tomato and peppers crops. It's spread by different thrip species. So in this trial, we're looking at using silver plastic mulch as a way to deter thrips away from the plants to reduce the spread of the virus. So here we're comparing the silver mulch versus the standard black mulch within pepper production. So throughout the season, we'll monitor for the amount of thrips using these blue sticky cards. And then of course, we will test for the tomato spotted wilt virus within these pepper plants later on. The silver mulch is effective because it reflects and shines bright lights that deter the thrips and a lot of other pest species away from the plant. We're also using silver mulch over here with our brassica crops to exclude the cabbage aphid and other various pests. So we're comparing the silver to the black mulch. Many Native American nations use the three sisters intercropping practice based on the knowledge of the three cultivated groups, corn, bean, and squash, taking care of one another when planted together. Three sisters intercropping likely enhance soil health, but little research has examined why this might be true. The reasons may include the same biophysical mechanisms in modern intercropping that result in nutrient cycling, soil, biological activity and the accumulation of soil organic matter. We wanted to try out the three sisters technique on our farm site. So we set up two plots, one where we have the corn, beans, and squash plants planted separately in three rows compared to the squash, bean, and corn intercrop together for the three sisters method. So obviously we don't have any weed control here because we want to allow that to be a part of the study to see if weeds have an effect and if there's a lot of weed control with the intercropping method. So we're excited to see how this goes. We're gonna compare the different yield and overall plant health along with maybe some plant nutrient analysis and a soil test to see what's going on here. 
The demonstration farm also allows us to monitor for different pests. So we set up a variety of pheromone traps, which use a synthetic lure that has the same pheromone of different specific species that will attract them. So they'll come into these orange delta traps and they will get caught on our sticky cards. So pheromone traps are a great way for farmers to monitor different pests that might be present in the area and also allow us to look for new pests that may or may not be present in the state. So here's the lure we used for the cabbage looper. So it was in the delta trap, the cabbage looper, adult moths, Sense the lure, they came and they got trapped. So this can be used as a monitoring tool for large farms to know kind of what the population levels are at. So yellow sticky traps are a common tool that are used in home gardens and farms just to catch pests and it can help you monitor for what might be around eating your crops and give you an idea of how you need to manage. Pollinators play a vital role in our agricultural industry, local economies, and overall health of our ecosystem. Unfortunately, many pollinator populations have experienced a drastic decline in recent years. Population loss can be linked to several contributing factors such as loss of habitat, changing climate, associated with weather patterns, and disease and pesticide use. With collaboration with the Utah Department of Ag and Food, we're participating in the Pollinator Habitat Program. The goal of this program is to increase the amount of available pollinator habitat throughout Utah with particular focus on native bee habitats, enhance and expand the existing landscape to improve resources like pollen and nectar available for pollinators, provide better connectivity between habitats to better support beneficial species, increase access and availability of native seed resources across the state, and of course, increase public awareness and involvement to improve pollinator habitats statewide. We're excited to have this pollinator garden right here adjacent to our vegetable production so we can see the benefits of having different pollinators and beneficial insects right alongside our commercial vegetable production. If you have more questions about integrated pest management, check out our website and all our resources on the USU Extension website. And also check out this and other videos about IPM.